Today is the Feast of Christ the King. It's the last Sunday of the church year before we begin a new liturgical year starting with Advent next week. Jesus is our King. You know, we may not think of Jesus being our King, that term, very often because, you know, even our country that we live in was founded off of getting out from under a king. The colonists, when they first came here, didn't want to be subject to the king of England. So it's, this is the mark of Christian freedom. Not being subject to any kind of ruler, king, monarch, dictator. And, and in a sense, it's true also for Christian freedom as well. We are not subject to any human, merely human, authority. But as Christians... We are subject to a king, but a different kind of king. A king who's not merely human, a king who is also divine. Jesus is our king. All things must become subject to him. That's what Paul said in our second reading. God is the source of all that is, and he is the purpose and the destination of all. So today, as we end the church year, the the gospel also has us reflect. Jesus has us think about that final destination, that final purpose. He tells us that at the end of our time here on earth, that we will be judged. Don't always like to hear that word, to be judged. We'll be judged on whether or not we've allowed Jesus to be our king. Whether or not we desire to be members of of his kingdom. Now, of course, judgment doesn't have to be something bad. God hopes that he can give us a good judgment, like he does in the gospel. Come, you who are blessed by my Father. But Jesus also reminds us that it is possible to say no, to say, I will not have you as my king, Jesus. I will not have anybody else be over me. Not even you. And so we can end up being separated for our eternity. If we choose to live separated from Jesus here on earth, then he'll let us have that. He gives us that freedom to choose that for all eternity. And then we would hear the judgment, depart from me. But of course, that's not Jesus' will. This is not God doesn't want anybody to remain apart from him. And so that's why Jesus ends up being a different kind of king than those we might think about. He is a shepherd king. A shepherd king. In our first reading in our psalm, and even in the gospel today, we have reference to what a shepherd is. A shepherd is the one who tends and he cares for his flock. A shepherd rescues the sheep, any that may have wandered away. The shepherd brings those sheep then back to the verdant pastures where he gives them rest and and healing. And so that's what Jesus, as our shepherd king, does for us. Jesus meets us wherever we are in our lives. Whether we are close to him or whether we have gone astray, following our own paths and gotten into sins. As a shepherd... He comes to find us because he does not want us to stay where we are. But he wants to lead us, draw us back closer to him, closer to his abundant life. Knowing that it's possible for us to be separated from him by sin, he gently shepherds us back to him. And to help us be brought back to him, to help us, Jesus has given us shepherds. And these shepherds, as we reflected on this past month, are his priests. Priests are shepherds that lead us to God's pastures. And really that's where the term pastor comes from, that we apply to some priests. Parishes have pastors to pastor us, to lead us somewhere, to lead us to God. So... God, the things of the faith, priests, are all here not just to keep us where we are, not just to maintain us 
at the spot where we are in our lives, but to lead us actively deeper into God's abundant life. So pastoral care doesn't necessarily, doesn't really mean just giving people what they want, but it means leading them to what their souls need. In the same sense, we've been going through pastoral planning, and that's meant to be the same thing. It's meant to lead us in a direction into the future as we reflect upon and try to um, address the current situations that we are. Ultimately, it's to lead us closer, deeper into God's life. That's why we hear an emphasis more and more on evangelization as something that we must do as a church. Evangelization really is the way that we participate with Jesus in his shepherding. Because all of us are called to act as shepherds. To help lead others deeper into God's abundant life. Through evangelization, Jesus asks us to take part in that. To help lead others to God. And it makes sense having met Jesus ourselves having our lives transformed by Him, we would want others to know Him too. Because we wouldn't want anybody to hear at the end of their life a bad judgment. We don't want anybody to hear, depart from me. Instead, we want everyone to be able to hear the good judgment. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And that's why we're called to evangelize, why we're called to invite others to experience God's shepherding care for us through His church. Why we do those acts of mercy that were repeated several times in the gospel. So that we can, like Jesus, meet others where they are and help lead them, shepherd them, guide them, be drawn by Jesus into His abundant life. So good we have that kind 